I'm here with Michael Hinson. He's the president and CEO of Self Inc. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Uh, so to start off, can you just talk about what Self Inc. is and what you guys do? So Self Inc. is a 30-year-old legacy organization. Um, we're the largest provider of emergency housing services uh, here in the city of Philadelphia. Um, we are a growing provider of permanent housing services uh, as well. Um, we have um, 13 different sites, um, many programs. Um, Pre-COVID, we were seeing up to 700 uh, individuals a day um, throughout our programming. Um, certainly, you know, those times have changed a bit, but um, we still continue to see a high number, a high volume of folks who are seeking um, emergency housing and also other kinds of supportive housing services. Um, we also provide um, share food um, to the Southwest Philadelphia neighborhood um, where there is certainly a food desert uh, in that neighborhood. So, you know, we're, we're a human service organization. Um, our goal is uh, to ensure that everyone um, has housing and that housing is the basis for all of the other things that people will grow into in their life. And so um, our first priority is to make sure that folks have housing. And we certainly support them with other supportive services, particularly, um, you know, any kind of physical or behavioral health services, um, and also with skills building and job readiness. Um, as you alluded to, uh, the pandemic has caused a significant financial impact and has caused um, an increase in, in homelessness. And uh, as you alluded to as well, uh, you are already are providing for a large population of people with in, in need for emergency housing in Philadelphia. How did you adapt to uh, such an increase in, in need in, uh, after an uh, increase in homelessness due to the pandemic? Well, um, the, the, the jury is probably still out on just how much of the homelessness has increased because of the pandemic. Um, we probably will see some of that um, in the coming months when the um, the rent moratorium, um, the eviction moratorium, um, you know, is no longer in place. Um, we're likely to see some increases there. We certainly have seen more people living on the street as opposed to living in emergency housing um, or in shelter. And so we've had to really think about how we adapt our services to meet the needs of those folks who are living on the street, but at the same time, keep safe those individuals um, who are actually, you know, living in our emergency housing sites. And so, you know, we put in very specific mitigation plans um, that, you know, that speak to, you know, how people should sleep, as an example, um, or how many people should be in a room, um, as an example, you know, people sleeping head to toe, um, uh, one bed, one bed filled and the next bed empty, the next bed filled, and then putting in uh, barriers uh, between all of the beds so that even with, you know, sleeping head to toe and skipping a bed, we still put in the barriers between each of the beds so that, you know, if someone you know, were to call for, um, you know, have uh, COVID, it would be more difficult for them to actually pass it um, in that environment with those protections in place. Of course, we offer testing um, through partnerships that we have with a local pharmacy and with a uh, local um, um, health center, a local uh, health center that we work with. Um, so we offer testing, we offer vaccinations, um, and a good deal of our work around COVID really centered around not just making our, our site safe, but making all of the sites safe and making the city safe, particularly for homeless individuals. Um, and so we've been, you know, thought leaders with our partners in government and um, partners in philanthropy and other places to really say, you know, things like having hand washing stations, public hand washing stations are very important for people um, who are homeless. The same with, you know, public bathrooms being available to folks who are homeless, right? Um, and so we've, you know, advocated those kinds of things. We've ad advocated for testing um, to be available. We've advocated for screening to be done at intake sites. Um, so that, you know, all of those things will help mitigate the um, possibility um, that infection will spread inside our sites. And um, I will say that certainly people probably would have expected it to be um, in terms of the infection, you know, in our sites would have expected it to be much worse than it is. Um, we're not 
you know, accepting or happy that it is what it is, but um, it is not as high as people would probably have um, expected it to be. Uh, and that's mostly because we were, you know, really out front about putting in the mitigation plans and advocating that be system-wide, not just at our locations. And of course, not just in your uh, the, the houses that individuals live in, but uh, in your own staff and your operations, um, how have you had to adapt to operate the same way, but uh, keeping you and the people that you work with safe? Yeah, so again, you know, our testing, you know, we offer testing, um, we offer, um, so, you know, for our, for our team members, um, if a team member, um, you know, becomes infected, we provide them with an additional 14 days of, of leave time that they don't have to take from their normal leave time um, so that they can be covered. Um, and then we also have put in um, plexiglass coverings in all of our locations. So team members, um, you know, have the, again, the, the plexiglass divider that divides them between each other, but also um, between them and participants. So um, we've been, and of course, you know, we're doing all of the PPE stuff, um, required masks, um, you know, in, in our shelters, um, hand sanitizing, hand, hand sanitizer, and then sanitizing every 30 minutes. Um, in our locations um, is another part of our mitigation plan. And our mitigation plans are site specific because our sites are very different from one place to another. Um, so the teams at those sites um, worked to develop very specific mitigation plans um, for those sites. Now, the pandemic has also been linked to increase uh, uh, addiction and substance abuse. Uh, does Self Inc. provide housing or special programs or even just advocacy for individuals struggling with these issues? Absolutely. Absolutely. We have, um, as an organization, we were founded by Dr. Sylvester Otley. And Dr. Sylvester Otley um, was himself a person who used and abused drugs. And so we've always been centered uh, in. Uh, the recovery system, um, and we've expanded our thought leadership and our practices to include harm reduction um, today um, in the last couple of years. And so, you know, we have sites that are specifically um, targeted to people um, who have previously lived in encampments and have opioid use disorder, um, um, substance use disorder, I'm sorry. Um, and so, and then we have sites that are what they call safe havens. Um, these are very low barrier sites for people who are currently using um, drugs, but still need to have a place um, to land. Um, and so they land in our safe haven and we provide them with services, get them connected to housing and any other sort of support services they need around their behavioral health, their mental health and their addiction health. And of course, the pandemic has been a widespread issue for everyone across the state, but we've seen that it has had a disproportionate impact impact on our black and brown communities. Uh, on your website, you list uh, social determinants of health as one of the approaches that you use to uh, helping people in your organization. Um, can you talk about how those uh, uh, are linked to some of the inequities that are that we see in our black communities throughout this pandemic? Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a tough conversation, but it really is an easy conversation, right? Here's what we know. We know that things like education, housing, food access, uh, drug treatment, you know, all of those things that are related to um, social determinants of health have historically uh, been high in communities of color, particularly black and brown uh, communities, right? And, 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 and in part, it's high because our system really um, was designed in such a way that it systemically um, discriminated and discriminates against um, people of color, right? Um, you know, when you think about us not being able to access health care for a very long time, and still today, in pockets of our country, there are large numbers of Black black and brown folks who still have difficulty, particularly in rural areas and in the South, who still have difficulty accessing you know, our, our health infrastructure and even our public health uh, infrastructure. So what COVID has really done 
is really just shine a light on, you know, what we've always known and certainly has intensified uh, the feeling of not being fairly cared for um, or represented, you know, in our public health infrastructures. And so that's something that we as an organization um, have taken a good deal of leadership on promoting the need to dismantle and reorganize our public health infrastructures um, so that they include the needs and the voices of Black and Brown people. And finally, for people in uh, Philadelphia who want to learn more about uh, the housing that you guys provide or any of the many programs that you provide, uh, what's the best way that they can get information about you guys? So I would say the best way, the easiest way, the most efficient way is to visit our website, which is www.selfinc. So I'll spell it www.selfinco. RP.org, selfincorp.org. That's the best way. Um, if someone wanted to, you know, email us, they could also email us at info at selfincorp.org. Um, they could certainly email us and we respond um, regularly to um, any information requests that we receive um, from, you know, from folks who, who email us. And, and lastly, you know, folks could always call us. Um, our phone number is 215 Four nine six nine six one zero, and we're always happy to take uh, questions and you know bring new folks on and hopefully you know get some new volunteers to help us out with some of this great work that we're doing. All right, Mike Hinson, President and COO at Self Inc. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. Have an awesome day.